All right, now that we've set up our preferences, let's take a look at the interface itself, how to move around, and what some of the tools do. So as we were seeing before, we have our waveform display here. And this indicator right here is showing us where we are in time. And it's called, in fact, the current time indicator. That vertical red line is the actual exact time. And down here in the time display, we're also seeing the exact time in terms of hours, minutes, seconds, and parts of seconds. And by dragging this around, you'll see that that updates. You'll also hear that as I drag it around, it plays in a kind of chunky way, the audio that's underneath there. And this is a useful tool when you're trying to locate specific areas in a file by ear. And over time, you'll get to hear that a little bit better and interpret that and uh, understand what that sort of chopped up sound means. Now, as you hear, remember from before, we were playing kind of a little jazzy thing. And for example, let's go back to the top. And as we drag through there, you'll hear that little hi-hat bit that was in the beginning. And this is what that sounds like as I drag through it. So as I said, with a little, with a little bit of practice, you can learn to interpret that and be able to navigate around by ear much more easily. So let's look at the tools in the tool strip up here and see what they do. The first one here is called the Spectral Frequency Display. And when I click that, we get kind of a spectacular change in the view here. Up at the top, we still have our regular waveform view, but down here we have this very colorful display that is a very different way of looking at the audio. These are still related, and in fact, the areas that are directly underneath each other here in the display are the same parts of the file. But instead of just showing us time and amplitude, that is to say time on the horizontal axis and amplitude or volume or gain or change of level in the vertical display. Instead, the frequency display shows us three different aspects. We still have time going horizontally, but instead of having strictly amplitude vertically, what we have now is frequency. And in fact, the bottommost areas are the lowest frequencies and the top areas are the highest frequencies in the sound itself. And because this is kind of a wide ranging sound, because it has the low frequency uh, bass and a high frequency symbol and so forth, the sound covers pretty much the entire audible spectrum. The colors refer to the amplitudes of those frequencies. The brighter, hotter colors are louder sounds or louder frequencies specifically, and the darker, bluer colors are less loud frequencies. So that in this case, most of the energy of the amplitude is down in the lower frequencies, as you would expect. And in the higher frequencies, there's still audio there, but it's much less amplitude. And so with a little bit of practice, again, you can understand what this frequency spectral display is showing you and how to interpret that. So again, we have time in the horizontal axis, frequency in the vertical axis, and color representing the amplitude. And in fact, you can see here, you can see some of those beats in the spectral display itself changing over time. And this is going to be a very useful tool when we start working with this later on in the spectral frequency editing section, where we'll talk about how to repair sound and so forth. And there are a lot of powerful things you can do here that just really aren't possible in the regular waveform display itself. I'm going to turn that off for right now. And we'll look at some more of these tools in the next chapter.